Honda and Acura EV owners are finally getting access to the Tesla supercharging network. My name is Isaiah. This is Out of Spec Bits. Let's talk about it. Looking for your chance to drive off in a brand new electric vehicle and support a nonprofit? Well, one of the best nonprofits fighting for clean energy is running their seventh annual EV raffle for the planet, and it's their biggest yet. Here are three reasons why you should buy a ticket today to support our friends at the CCAN Action Fund. Number one, amazing odds. For the first time, each ticket gives you three chances to win an electric car. Even better, only 10,000 tickets will be sold. Those are great odds. Reason number two, the prizes are stunning. The grand prize winner gets to pick from six luxury EVs. The rugged R1S, the powerful R1, Tea, the brand new Lucid Gravity, the sleek Lucid Air, the bold Porsche Macan EV, or the iconic Porsche Taycan. Yeah, and those are all great cars, and again, you get to pick which one. The second place winner gets to choose from a Volkswagen ID Buzz or a Hyundai Ioniq 5. And there's a third place winner, a Chevy Equinox EV. Even better, the group will cover state and federal taxes. Oh, but what about tariffs? Well, no problem, they cover those too. Reason number three, the CCAN Action Fund supports clean energy nationwide. Why? So you could win a great EV and support a greener world. It really is kind of a win-win. To enter, check out www.evraffle.org. That's evraffle.org. Or simply click the link in the description below. Tickets are only $200. Enter to win today. 2025 is the year of NAX, and it has been a while since another automaker has gotten access to Tesla's supercharging network. But finally, Honda and Acura, Honda with the Prologue, Acura with the ZDX, and of course, Honda and Acura have a bunch of EVs coming out into this year and next year, are getting access to the Tesla supercharging network. One of the biggest things that stood out to me reading Honda's press release compared to the other OEMs and automakers that have gotten access to Tesla supercharging network, there is no plug in charge initially. Honda says that they will be introducing plug in charge capabilities. They're currently in development, but every single time Honda Prologue and Acura ZDX owners want to go to a Tesla supercharger, unlike Rivian, Ford, GM, Lucid owners that can Honda, Kia can use their adapters and just pull in. They don't have to worry about anything. Prologue and ZDX owners have to use the app, which could be a good thing. It's gonna force Honda Prologue and ZDX owners initially to use the Tesla membership, which is recommended because you get way cheaper charging, but no plug in charge, kind of an inconvenience in my opinion. And it's a bit weird because the Honda Prologue shares the exact same architecture and powertrain as the Chevy Blazer. They're pretty much the exact same vehicle. Same thing with the ZDX. It's literally just a Lyric underneath it. And those have plug-in charge. In fact, I believe there was a glitch at some point where Honda Prologue and ZDX owners were actually able to use the Tesla supercharger because there was no signal differing the Honda Prologue and ZDX from the Chevy Blazer and the Lyric, which had access to Tesla supercharging at the time. Believe it or not, you actually cannot charge these prologues on superchargers yet officially. Um, Honda announced that would be coming sometime in the month of June, and we're about halfway through June, and you still can't do it yet. But you've been able to charge these on superchargers for quite a while now. Uh, you just have to tell the Tesla app that you're charging a Chevy Blazer. So the Tesla supercharger thought the Prologue was a Blazer and the, the ZDX was a Lyric, but you can get an adapter directly from Honda and Acura dealers for the amazing price of $225. Unfortunately, you Honda and Acura owners are not getting free adapters. And of course, Honda and Acura have made a huge statement. Oh, we don't recommend third-party adapters. You can void your warranty, blah, blah, blah. I always say I recommend just getting it directly from your OEM. That being said, this adapter here is the same kind of electron made adapter, manufactured adapter that's going out to OEMs. It's the same adapter that Ford and GM and even Honda Kia have been pushing. And so again, it's pretty much the same hardware. Don't have me void your warranty. All right. That's 
not my problem be cautious but again, it's really just an adapter just make sure you're getting it from a reliable source moreover honda prologue and acura zdx owners can now use the standard in vehicle google built-in maps capability to quickly locate authorized supercharger locations initially the tesla app will be required for honda and acura ev owners to initiate charging at tesla superchargers integration with the honda link and acura ev apps and plug and charge capabilities are currently in development. Also, Honda is a part of IANA, so they made a statement saying, by 2030, Honda and Acura EV owners will have access to approximately 100,000 DC fast charge points across North America, including the all new IANA DC fast charging network, the Tesla superchargers, EVgo, and other open charging networks, which is pretty cool. Now, because the adapter is $225 and it isn't free, it might take a while for us to, if we even do, see Prolog owners start to use the Tesla supercharger network, but the Prologue is like top five, top 10 best-selling EVs. Honda and Acura sold more than 26,000 Prologue and ZDXs in the first half of 2025. That is a lot of vehicles that will be introduced to the Tesla supercharging network. So it'll be interesting to see that influx of cars going into superchargers. But again, because the adapter costs money, I'm sure it will take some time. If you are a Honda Prologue or Acura ZDX owner, I'm curious, will you be getting an adapter? Will you be looking forward to using the Tesla supercharging network? But now Honda Prologue and Acura ZDX owners have access to 23,500 Tesla superchargers across the United States, and it is growing ever so quickly. And then again, you have organizations like IANA, you have BP Pulse, you have EVgo continuing to expand, you have Electrify America continuing to expand and replace some of their older hardware with newer hardware, more reliable hardware. You got Rivian with the Rivian Adventure Network. Charging is becoming more and more easy. And I got to give it to Tesla because I just drove 4,000 miles across the East Coast and I don't think it would have been possible without the Tesla supercharging network. So people having access to better infrastructure is just going to allow them and be more interested in buying an EV. As a reminder, we got Ford, Rivian, GM, Volvo, Polestar, Nissan, Lucid, Mercedes-Benz, Hyundai, Genesis, and Kia, all with access to the Tesla supercharging network through adapters or native NACs, which is awesome. Very soon, we will be also be seeing BMW. I think they will be the next automaker. That is my guess. You also have Jaguar, Land Rover. So I am assuming the I-Pace, which is no longer in production, will also, I-Pace I -Pace owners will also be getting access to the Tesla supercharging network. Toyota, Subaru, I imagine those will happen at once as well because the BZ4X and the Solterra, pretty much the same vehicle. Oh my gosh, you also have the slew of new Toyota and Subaru EVs that have just come out. So those will also be getting access to the Tesla Supercharger Network and those all have native NACs. Great. You also have Volvo, Audi, and Porsche, the Volkswagen Group brands. And that is it for now. Of course, Stellantis, they'll probably be the last ones getting access to the Tesla Supercharger Network. But there are more and more companies getting access to the Tesla Supercharger Network. Again, 2025 is the year of NACs, and it is great to see more EV owners get access to great, reliable charging infrastructure. But that's it. Thought I'd update you guys about Honda Acura getting access to the Tesla Supercharger Network. I will say though, going through this Honda press release, there is an image of a Acura ZDX and an adapter and a, a J3400 like, you know, NACs cable. This is the girthiest J3400 cable I've ever seen in my life. I don't know who photoshopped this. No offense, it's absolutely horrible. This is, I, me and Jordan were laughing about this. I can't, I can't believe that this image exists. I'm never going to, I'm never going to not acknowledge that this image exists. This will forever be something that I talk about. So Acura, Honda, your Photoshop people, good job, you gave me a really good laugh. But yeah, to end it all, really still no plug and charge. I think it's absolutely crazy that there is no plug and charge. Again, it's like a five second inconvenience. And if you use the Tesla membership, you're using the app anyway. It is much cheaper, way cheaper, but still no plug and charge. But again, it's not an issue because you're gonna have, 
you know, the membership's cheaper, but it's an inconvenience, even though it only takes a couple seconds and the app is cheaper, but no plug and charge is a bit of an inconvenience. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Isaiah. This is Out of Spec Bits, and I'll see you guys in the next one.